Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be working through questions 6 to 10 of the Intermediate Maths Challenge from 2021. But I actually don't think you should watch this video, because I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution, there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below. You can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So I do really think that's the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, but of course if you'd rather watch the uh, solutions here on YouTube, you're also uh, very well welcome. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps me get this content out there, otherwise we will uh, get on with the questions now. In question 6, Kai has begun to list in ascending order the positive integers that are not factors of 240, and we want to know what's the sixth number on Kai's list. So if we start just listing the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc, I can cross out the ones that are factors. 1 is a factor of everything, it's obviously even, so 2 is a factor. We can see that 3 is a factor, Remember the digit sum test that says that if you add the digits together and it's a multiple of 3, uh, then, um, then 3 is a factor. That test works for 9 as well. 2 plus 4 is 6. That's not a multiple of 9. So actually, 9 will be on Kai's list. It's not a multiple of 9. Um, now, um, as I keep going through this list, uh, I can still... I can just check them one by one. Um, you might like to have the prime factorization of 240 handy, right? So I could write it as 24 times 10 or I could write it as 8 times 3 times 2 times 5. Um, 8 is 2 cubed, right? So I've got 2 cubed times 2 times 3 times 5, or 2 to the 4 times 3 times 5. Do it with a factor tree if you prefer. Um, but the more you do this, uh, the more you'll make arguments like this. And actually, I can see now where the numbers are factors pretty quickly, because I've just got to see if I can get them out of the prime factorization, right? So 4 is in there, because 4 is 2 squared, and I've got a 2 to the 4. So I've uh, I've definitely got a 2 squared in there. Um, 5 is in there, so it's a multiple of 5. 6 is 2 times 3, well I've got a 2 and a 3, um, so 6 is a factor. 7 is not here, no 7s, so that's going to be in Kai's list. 8 is a factor, we can see that here. Um, 10 is a factor, because 2 times 5 is in there. Uh, 11, no 11s in the prime decomposition, so that's in Kai's list. 12 is uh, 2 squared times 3, and I've got a 2 squared and a 3, so uh, that's a factor. 13 is a prime that's not in the factorization, so that's in the list. 14 is 2 times 7, well there's no 7 in the prime factorization, so it can't be a multiple of 14. Um, 15 is 3 times 5, so that's a, a factor. At this point I can see the answer to the question is 17, because I've exhausted all of the options, um, but for completeness, let's say 16 is 2 to the power of 4, so it's a multiple of 16, and uh, 17 is a prime that's not in the factorization, so that's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th number in Kai's list, and the answer is E. No need to overcomplicate this one, we're just going to do the calculation. Uh, improper fractions are the best for this sort of calculation, so 4 minus a quarter, that's 16 over 4, uh, minus a quarter, that's 15 over 4, 2 minus a half, uh, that's 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2, so that's 3 over 2. So I just need to do 15 over 4 divided by 3 over 2. That's the same as 15 over 4 times 2 thirds. And now if I cancel this down, 15 and 3 cancel to give 5, and the 2 and the 4 cancel to give 2, and 5 over 2 is 2 and a half, and so the answer is C. In this question I've just made the diagram a bit bigger, uh, but we've got the diagram showing two 10 by 14 rectangles edge to edge and they share a common vertex, so that's this one here. Um, also we've got the centre of this rectangle and the midpoint uh, of this line, and we want to know what the distance here uh, bet from uh, O to M here is. Now to work out this distance we're going to want to use Pythagoras' theorem on this triangle here, so if I can just work out the lengths of the uh, other sides of the triangle, I can apply that, so they're 10 by 14 rectangles, so that's 10 by 14, and then this one must be 10 by 14 this way around. If M is the midpoint, uh, that means that this is halfway along this line, so that's going to be a distance uh, of 5 here. Um, o is the centre of 
this rectangle, so it's also halfway along here, so this would be 7, giving a total length along here of 12. And then to get this distance from here to here, uh, well, again, O is the centre of this rectangle, so this distance here is 5, this height is 14, so I must have a 9 uh, as, the, as the length here. So I've got a right angle triangle with length 9, 12 and something, so we can apply Pythagoras theorem to it. Um, I'll give you an even quicker way in a second, but uh, Pythagoras theorem just says here that x squared is going to be 9 squared plus 12 squared, so that's 81 plus 144, which is 225. So x is the square root of 225, which perhaps you know is 15, or if not, you can try out some numbers of the right size, but knowing your square numbers up to 20 is very useful here. Um, perhaps an even easier way of doing this is if you're experienced with Pythagoras and you've thought about Pythagorean triples, you should know this triangle that's 3, 4, 5, comes up all the time, right? 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared. That's what we call a Pythagorean triple, where we've got an integer uh, solution uh, here to Pythagoras theorem, or, an inter or, or I mean an example of Pythagoras theorem where all the uh, values are integers, right? And if you just scale that up by a scale factor of 3, right, 9 is 3 times 3, 12 is 4 times 3, uh, so this is this triangle is just this one scaled up by 3, so this length is 5 times 3, which is 15. Again, if you want a really fast way of doing this that helps you get through to the later questions quickly, this is exactly the sort of thing you want to be spotting. Either way you do it, the answer here is B15. How many of the following statements are true? Okay, well, a prime multiplied by a prime number is always prime. Um, we can show things are wrong very easily, right? So if I take a prime number like 5 and multiply it by another prime number, for example, itself 5, I get 25. Actually, this is basically never true. You know, if I take a prime number and I multiply it by another prime number, I get something that's not prime. It's kind of the, what, what a prime means. A pri to be prime, it's got its only factors, can be 1 in itself. So if you multiply two prime numbers together, you're going to get something that's not prime. So this one is definitely false. Um, a square multiplied by a square is always a square. This is probably the hardest one to really convince yourself of out of these. Um, you could try some examples like 4 times 9 is a square times a square, and you get another square. Um, and if you keep trying it, it will always work because it's true. Um, but if you really want to uh, convince yourself it's true, you'd need to write something like, well, a square number in general is going to be x squared. If I multiply it by y squared, that would be the same thing as having x times y uh, all squared here, right? For example, here you say 2 squared times 3 squared is 2 times 3 squared, which is 6 squared. So it is always the case that if you multiply a square by a square, you get a square. That one's true. Um, an odd number multiplied by an odd number is always an odd number. Um, yeah, I think we know that's true from our basic experience. You, that you could prove it, but the, the maths challenge is not the place to be writing out proofs of things that we know to be true. We are under time constraints and we want to just get through this. So odd times odd is odd, even times even is even. They're both definitely true. So three out of four statements are true, and the answer is D3. The prime factor decomposition of 2021 is 43 times 47, and we're asked what's the value of 53 times 57. Now this isn't my favourite IMC question for a reason I'll uh, tell you at the end, but the way that they're intending for us to do this question is to say something like, well, we know 43 times 47 is 2021, and if we jump to 53 times 47, well, that would be an extra 10 lots of 47 compared to 43 times 47. So that would be 2021 plus 10 lots of 47, which is 470. And then I could say, ah, 53 times 57, well, that'll be the same uh, as before, what we've got extra now is 10 lots of 53. We've got 57 lots of 53 instead of 47 lots of 53. So I'm also going to add on 10 lots of 53, which is 530. Now 470 plus 530 is 1,000. So we just need to do 2,021 plus 1,000, which gives us 3,021. And the answer is D. Now this isn't my favorite IMC question because uh, for a math challenge question here, you've got this information that you're given at the start, but we could just totally disregard it. And I think it might even be quicker to do the question uh, if we do, if we just work out 53 uh, times 57. If you can do a long multiplication pretty quickly here, 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 5 is 35, plus 2 gives me 37. Put a 0 here, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 5 is 25. So add the 1 to give us 26. And then if I just add these together, I get 1, and then 12, and then 10, and then... 
that gives me a three, so I get 3,021. So actually just doing the multiplication is a very good option here. So I really hope that was useful. Don't forget, I think the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge is to click below and take my totally free online course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more, not just with the solutions, but also with video hints to help you get started. So do check that out if you haven't already and share it with your friends. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps me get the content out there and I will see you soon.